As a young As a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Shobhith Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, deemed to be university, and its centers of excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022, Atma Nirvar Bharat in Agriculture. This webinar is being hosted on every Thursday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. due to heavy rain today. You know, we uh, we have started today's session at 11.30 a.m. Today is 30th June 2022. This webinar is on very important topic. Village e-commerce, challenges, barriers, and potentials in rural India. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus, and chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, and Center for Info Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing. Let me welcome the today's guest speaker to deliver the talk in the 82nd edition of this national webinar series, Dr. Smith Parikh, and he is CEO and founder of Indian Institute of E-Commerce. It is an autonomous institute registered under Section 8 of the Companies Act 2013, you know, to, to teach e-commerce in this country. So far under the this webinar series, for the benefits of the participants and the guest speaker, the university has organized 81 webinars on the topics in various important areas. Role of agricultural cooperative societies and e-governance. In this country, we got about 1 lakh primary agricultural cooperative societies, 1.5 dairy cooperative societies, and 22,000 primary fisher cooperative societies. All these societies have to become a value-added chain. Blockchain technology-based fishery value chain. A self-contained village, a felt need of the day. Spices Informatics Network Value Chain, Lantana Camera, a camouflaged treasure trough, Smart Hill Agriculture, a digitalized hill agriculture value system, Mara Mobile, Mara Marketing, Integrated Mariculture, Aquaponics, and Precision Agriculture, MAPA Biofarms for Income Revolution, Smart Tribal Agriculture, Optimizing Value Chain, Digital Agritech and Industry Perspective. Land Resources Information System in India, present and road ahead. Weather Decision Technologies for Increasing Farm Income. Big Data in Smart Farming. Sustainable Soil and Land Management for Climate and Smart Agriculture. Understanding Market Dynamics for Increasing Farm Income. Role of Technologies in Mitigating Crop Risk. How to Generate Additional Profit via Simple Attractive Approaches in Farm Produce. Ad adoption of flexi rubber check rubber check dam technology potential benefit for farmers in rainford and coastal agro ecosystems realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry actosol organic humic solutions for increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving soil health closing the nutrient loop phosphorus management in protein farming improving nutrient use efficiency and farm productivity Artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agricultural crop protection without pesticides. Empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination. Role of mass media. Poultry monitoring, smart poultry monitoring solutions. Agrobiodiversity, intellectual property laws, agriculture and farmers' welfare, and insight into the issues for India's agrarian economy. Manufacture and application of biochar for increased soil fertility and crop productivity. 
sustainable integration of livestock with agriculture and for farm income increase role of geographical indications on improving farmers income lessons from asia pacific region dairy informatics network value chain a dairy tech startup perspective for farmers income increase spices informatics network value chain a turmeric startup perspective for farmers income increase generating sustainable on farm income through fintech interventions nutrition sensitive agriculture pathway for increasing farmer income artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil harvested food that minimizes human disease bioenergy supply chain a business opportunity for rural enterprises and farmer producer organization tech enabling india's strength started farmers for many fold increase in productivity and income open insurance ecosystem for agriculture producers risk management solutions to overcome repercussions on farmers income market stability and food safety Produ role of mass media for farmer income increase a case study from green tv extract open source digital infrastructure for agricultural ecosystem a linux foundation's project circular bioeconomy towards resilience urgent in need for redefining raw materials and modified waste management policies and re regulations attack agriculture technology attack new horizon in indian agriculture supporting of farmers for marketing will only help doubling of income by 2022 rural transformation for farmers income increase case studies from impoverished districts mobile enabled software as a service to solve complex supply chain challenges a case study from daily orders john deere's journey in india integrated for precision agriculture solutions doubling the income of income of farmers through eco agri revolution bayer's carbon farming initiative post production intervention maximizing value for farmers beef models of revival of traditional water management systems to enable doubling of farmers income should we adopt to farmers income farmers welfare as a new paradigm instead of farmers income farmers welfare instead of farmers income ict intervention in agriculture challenges and opportunities democratizing the future of farming a global experience commercial processing of orders the next game changer in dairy data driven agriculture and agri tech startups perspective agri business potentials in muriga agriculture income pathways strengthening links between agriculture activities and nutrition outcomes agriculture income pathway strengthening links between agriculture activities and nutrition outcomes technology education research re rehabilitation for the environment cultivating dignity for farmers model village development programs a case study from maharashtra market driven agriculture need for development of crop specific strategies at block level farmers collective with value addition powerful business model for income increase for small and marginal farmers lessons from operation fred for transforming agriculture and food systems sustainable food production agriculture marketing in india defects therein and remedial measures small scale fisheries and their contribution to rural livelihoods case study from developing countries impacting lives through livelihood promotion and value chain development case study from bruti impact model organic spices cultivations organic spices cultivations for doubling of farmers income in northeastern region of india a value chain analysis agriculture exports management imperative of integrating with global value chain at the earliest agriculture value chain challenges and opportunities dairy husband for food security and national prosperity mushroom cultivation a way towards self reliance from agriculture waste and providing nutritional food security to the nation swash palekar natural farming future of farming future of farming rooted in indian tradition vision 2025 agriculture and allied sectors view point doubling income of tribal farm families through value chain intervention on minor forest producer a case study on custard apple value chain from udaipur rajasthan unnati agri internet in farmlands key for prosperous farmers jackfruit informatics network value chain a needed digital infrastructure for increasing farmers income 
doubling of farmers income through integrated agri value chain potential role of minor fr fruits in achieving nutritional and livelihood security farmers fisheries informatics network value chain case study from manja technologies untapped potential for growth co create solutions to realize gains for farms household and communities name three sustainable solutions to livelihood chemical free nutritious food and global warming odap one district one product informatics network value chain the key to unlocking india's potential for of agri export today is the 82nd edition of the national webinar series which will be addressed by dr smith parik on a very important topic village cupboards challenges barriers and potential in rural india Dear participants, you see the key words, village, e-commerce, challenges, barriers, potential of rural India. India is said to be a land of villages. Acharya Vinoba Baba said India is largely an agricultural country, Krishi Pradhan Desh, and a country of villages, Gramin Pradha, Gram Pradhan Desh, having more than 6.25 lakhs villages. It employs more than 50% of the workforce and contributes almost 19% of its GDP. And climate, has, climate change has both the direct and indirect effects on agricultural productivity, including changing rainfall patterns, severe drought, flooding, and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and diseases. India's labor-intensive and subsistence-based agriculture sector is particularly vulnerable to this development. Farmers of India are facing multi-dimensional problems, price fluctuation, debt, lack of infrastructure, and weather. Indian farming community consists of 14.5 crore operational holders, of which 85% farmers have small and marginal size operational holdings. Farmer needs timely, location-specific, and personalized information for effective control on their production, risk, and then market their produce to identify the market opportunities. I would like to quote our Honorable Prime Minister, what he said on 15th August 21. In the coming years, we will have, we will have to increase the collective power of the small farmers of the country. We have to give them new facilities. They must become country's pride. And I also would like to quote the recommendations of the doubling farmers' income by 2022 towards digitalization of agriculture. I was closely associated with this volume 12B of the doubling farmers' income, which talks about seven mission mode projects for total digitalization of agriculture. It is very important to strengthen village e-commerce. Digitalized agriculture, smart rainfed farming, smart irrigated farming, smart tribal farming, synergization of digital India, smart, you know, skill India, startup India, make in India at a farm level and farmer level, digitalized agrometer advisories and agricultural risk management systems, digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming, digitalized value chain for 400 agriculture commodities, from 6.25 you know, lakhs villages. Digitalized access to inputs, technology, knowledge, skill, agriculture, finance, credit, marketing, and agribusiness management and to farmers. Village e-commerce means it has to facilitate what is being produced from the village and it also has to facilitate to the needs of villages, the commodities, producers, products from outside. And Digitalized integrated land and water management systems per drop more crop and far, digitalized farm health management systems to reduct, uh, for reduction of farmers' loss, human health, farmer health, plant health, animal health, soil health, water health, and fisheries health, and environmental health. This integrated approach to using a GIS technology and data analytics and Artificial intelligence and machine learning can create a trillion dollar data economy on farm health informatics alone. 
and we have atmanirbhar bharat this is the vision of our prime minister shri narendra modi of making india self reliant nation rested on five i's intent inclusion investment infrastructure and innovation based on five pillars namely quantum jump in economy infrastructure one that represents modern india systems 21st century technology driven vibrant demography demand where by strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to the full capacity and during the third trench of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan agriculture sector got 1.5 lakh crore as a booster after which 1 lakh crore is for to agriculture cooperative societies farmer produce organization and startups are boosting farm gate infrastructure 10000 crores for formalization of micro food enterprises and following and for following cluster based farming approach and we also have an amrit call led up to 100 means 25 years perspective plan strategic plan to make india new india sustainable development goals and Atma, and agenda 2030 gives us the future we want 17 sustainable development goals and 169 targets to be achieved value chain development is very important which brings all the stakeholders engaged in the production system on a common platform to contribute their best while ensuring fair deal and transparency fair trade practices which includes all in all the input suppliers technology delivering agencies scientists indirectly engaged in developing appropriate technologies and extension offices who are all involved in capacity building and providing various services to the farmer one one district one product scheme and it is it is the significance of the scheme as adopted as introduced in india to increase economic growth employment and rural entrepreneurialism all regions should be able to benefit from a holistic socio-economic expansion to increase exports and manufacturing and manufacturing within the district by attracting investors create an environment that promotes innovation and application of technology in the district to be competitive with international and domestic markets and rural youths are the future of the food security and they need to be engaged in the agriculture in india why we need efficient agri agriculture supply chain we grow more we waste more we are one of the biggest food waster of the world despite a huge hunger stricken population developing rural economies rural e-commerce developing rural e-commerce trends and challenges i would like to quote from and report from mekong institute which is published in march 2019 written by sanchita chatterjee rural e-commerce could mean one of two things one e-commerce involving rural products that is a platform for rural producers and traders to sell their products beyond their local markets or two e-commerce intended for rural consumer customers which may contain products from all over the world so it is both outward and inward transaction rural e-commerce in different forms as has developed in many countries of asia in the past four decades mostly rural e-commerce in asia has focused on helping rural producers to upgrade and market their produce products and promote the cultural heritage of particular religion one village one product in japan and asian countries some of some other forms of rural e-commerce have also attempted to reach out to the farmers and the important basic principle of one village one product is self-reliance and credit creativity self-reliance and creativity local but yet global local yet global and human resources development it fulfills this important three principles and one one village one product initiative was developed in waita prefecture in japan in 1979 to revitalize its rural communities and create value added in the rural economy since regenerations 
and since regeneration and growth of japanese economy following the world war 2 was mainly focused in urban areas since world war 2 in japan the in the in the growth of japanese economy was mainly focused on urban areas so 1979 this one village one product scheme was initiated rural e-commerce has been particularly chi- successful in china chopa village is an example owned by alibaba.com offers e-marketplace to rural e-tailers in china has been instrumental in transforming rural areas in the country e chopal initiative in india which is characterized by characterized by providing information knowledge and quality inputs and expanding market access augmenting natural resources through watershed development and social and farm forestry generating supplementary income through livestock development women empowerment and education and vocational training other uh, and issues in rural e-commerce there is a several challenges in rural e-commerce some challenges are common as e-commerce in general such as inadequacies in infrastructure transport transport and logistics issues in supply chain example quality of procurement storage and transport of goods etc problems in payment systems delivery issues like timeliness and quality of delivery security issues security of online payment digital literacy and information asymmetry let us see that what is the status in village e village e commerce in india i would like to quote from the website of hindrise.org it talks about there is a need for the booming growth of village e commerce rural indian market ensures untapped potential to become the market leader for most e-commerce business enthusiasts enthusiasts and budding entrepreneurs since independence nothing has happened in terms of boosting the rural distribution of commercial products within india's geographical boundaries even my district has got 25 varieties of banana it doesn't reach even our capital delhi therefore the urgent need of boosting rural distribution of commercial products within india's geographical boundaries is needed urgent need of the our is to accelerate the expansion of commercial enterprises and e-commerce businesses in rural areas india has emerged as one of the diverse countries worldwide more than 70% of the india's population resides in villages or rural parts of india with various government initiatives concerning the broad picture of digital village where maximum people will able to enjoy internet facilities there is a substantial rise in the number of internet users in recent years nation had seen a significant turnaround concerning the flopping of bings by ecom big e-commerce players like flipkart amazon etc in villages of rural india sectors where e-commerce is shining or in various sectors of in rural india e-commerce has a pivotal role to play it is uplifting the way of living of people belonging to rural backgrounds and bringing transformative changes in the thought process and world beliefs as well it is taking place in household sector handicrafts and agro based products challenges faced by e-commerce companies in rural india inefficient and incompetent internet services lack of trust poor transport infrastructure and connectivity issues currency challenges and lack of awareness and personalization is is a challenge and even then e-commerce in rural india is a win win situation in the last 2 years india postal service have collaborated with around around 400 e-commerce websites e-commerce have devised a social reform in the con- community especially in rural domains and hindrai social welfare foundation says we believe that the village e-commerce have more relevance than urban regions of india even increasing scope of village e-commerce in rural india is due to the rapidly rising numbers of internet users throughout the country 
common services centers of the Ministry of Information Technology and Electronics have established e grooming store during COVID situation. It's a rural e-commerce app is proving beneficial in order to cater larger commerce activities and boost the sale of grocery, grocery in rural areas. Common services centers launched this e grooming app during lockdown in April 2020. And this e-commerce, how it can be fostered for rural development, building capacity of rural producers to use e-commerce to market and sell their producers. This is where today's topic is very important. Building capacity of rural people to become online consumers. Or, you know, that building capacity of rural producers to use e-commerce to market or sell their products or purchase intermediary products for their business. That is, agriculture producers, smallholder farms, village factories, producers of local graphics. We have some startups. India's first assisted e-commerce platform for rural area takes orders from customers in 16 states. That is called Moonbox and has the ability to deliver products in 3 lakhs villages, which is 47% of villages in India. It started in 2019. Rural Indian in market, rural India market is an untapped potential that most e-commerce businesses would like to venture into. It is the third largest space for startup ecosystem in the world. While the government continues to focus on creating digital infrastructure at the grassroots level, with the digital Bharat, here are the startups which are trying to build significant and better businesses by tapping rural market in India. Example, Store King, Next Door Hub, In3, Heza, and so on and so forth. Khadi and village industries, which is are also boosting India's rural economy via e-commerce. It has, it has unveiled a unique platform. It's called e GadiIndia.com, which showcase about 50,000 products and, <coughs> and the common services center of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has integrated with one network, open network for digital governance, OD, ONDC, to promote e-commerce and logistic in rural India. And this ONDC is a public non-profit Section 8 company established by the Department of Promotion of Industries and Internal Trade to develop open e-commerce. And it is in association with Protein eGov Technologies Limited. Technological self-reliance, demand for local playing field mainly from small retailers, Lower, lower the barrier of entry and discovery online, adoption of open digital ecosystem across key sectors and fixing the non-competitive behavior of big e-commerce firms like Amazon and Flipkart to capture the U.S. $810 billion domestic retail market led to the creation of ONDC. This is their main aim. The pilot phase was launched on 29th April 2022 in five cities, New Delhi, Bengaluru, Bhopal, Shillong, and Coimbatore. The back end of ONGC is built on backend protocol, an open and interoperable protocol for decentralized digital commerce. Backend gateways provides anonymized Aggregated data generated from the network. Nanda Nilakini, Pramod Verma, Sujit Nair from the Open Shared Mobility Foundation have developed the backend protocol in partnership with Esprit. Amazon is working with YNDC to digitize Kirana stores. With this input, let us now turn to the address by Dr. Smith Parikh, certified e commerce professional. CEO and founder Indian Institute of E-Commerce, an autonomous institute registered under Section 8 of the Companies Act 2013, New Delhi, and director in INTT CEO Private Limited, Singapore, and partner Amazon trained e-commerce specialist, Amazon India, on the very important topic, B2B 
village e-commerce challenges barriers and potentials in rural india and today's topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com oblique sobit university india or youtube.com oblique sobit university in or linkedin.com oblique company oblique sobit dash university for establishing village e-commerce one village one product value chain to promote and sustain we work all for local to make it global let us unlock the potential and opportunities in india at the earliest let me introduce the guest speaker to the audience mr manish can you put the profile dr smith parik is a chairman indian institute of e-commerce section 8 company and instrumental in developing key digital degree programs on e-commerce industry for government government of india's national university students skill development program which was initiated as a pilot project in 2013 and is currently being tested in 11 universities across nine states he has trained about 50500 students in partnership with the tata institute of social science under the national university student skill development program and inhibited 136 entrepreneurs and built a automated income generation startup marvelous he worked with nari shakti nari shakti yojana an amazon karigar program in association with the directorate general of handicrafts of government of india gst council of india and world trade council to help 10000 plus artisans to sell to sell online through amazon and flipkart and built a dedicated e-commerce store for indian handicraft artisans as a partner amazon india since 2016 dr smith has onboarded 1 lakh plus sellers into amazon india through con uh, through consultants network for amazon amazon trained e-commerce specialist ats as the program director alibaba group china dr smith parik created a certification as a joint intellectual property with alibaba.com to onboard 1 billion global trade professionals under the global e-commerce talent initiative by alibaba since 2015 is instrumental in launching a certified e-commerce professional program a globally recognized and registered professional certification for e-commerce industry over 25000 working professionals and entrepreneurs have enrolled into cep certification since 2015 he was a jury panelist at the world trade organization geneva public forum 2016 he has been exploring indian products internationally using e-commerce portal and has strategic partner with y ventures singapore a singapore stock market listed company to help south east asian countries connect with the indian suppliers he has been advisor to trade bricks zenzilo platform for cross border between india cross border trade between india and africa with this introduction i welcome dr sweet parik chairman of indian institute of e-commerce to address national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 atmanirbhar bharat in agriculture on a very important topic village e-commerce challenges barriers and potentials in rural india over to you thank you so much uh, professor moni to get me on today's session and uh, thank you to the honorable chancellor and vice chancellor to create such kind of initiative which is really helpful for not just the university students but also for the whole of india i would like to uh, give little detail about uh, like what exactly motivated me to start with the village e-commerce model so let us just go few years back before we know about the challenges that are currently faced by villages msmes msmes stands for the micro small and medium enterprises and majority of the villages have got micro or small enterprises so the challenges what i feel we can discuss but before that i need to tell you what is actually e-commerce 
most of the people think Amazon or Flipkart or any e-commerce platform, the marketplaces where people are uploading their products, that is e-commerce. But the actual meaning of e-commerce is not Amazon or Flipkart. They are one of the marketplaces. E-commerce is basically a method where the transactions are happening digitally or electronically. Which means if I have a phone and I'm making a purchase using my phone, using my card, or even if I'm doing a cash on delivery order, if I'm doing it through internet based or electronic media, which we are currently using, not offline, like going to a shop and doing a purchase and giving a cash there, that is not e-commerce. E-commerce is digital. It's very simple. Any buying and selling we do today online is e-commerce. It can be physical or it can be a non-tangible digital product. It can be even an online course. Every single thing is e-commerce. So this is the first understanding of what is e-commerce. As the world is getting digitalized, we see that uh, the people, uh, especially the younger generation, they do not want to go to places like shops or malls to make a purchase decision. Even if they go, they want to still purchase online because they want to check the price difference. And if the prices are better online, they'll just simply place order online. Even nowadays, there are a lot of investments going on for online grocery stores Companies like Big Basket, Grofers, Swiggy, Zometo, they have done amazing job during the COVID-19. And if you see this all, they have been in direct or indirect way, been helping the villages to grow through e-commerce. If you see Big Basket, Big Basket has got over 180 delivery points where they source products from the farms, and they connect those farms to the tier three or tier two towns. And from there, the logistics of the same company, Big Basket, takes to major cities. And this is a daily work that the Big Basket operations team does throughout India. So companies have been able to encash due to the sudden interest of people making a flexible choice. Obviously, e-commerce is the way that you can get the products home delivered. But through e-commerce, these companies have understood that there are essential needs, products for which people want, but they do not want to waste their time. And COVID-19 was the best way to give the real check that if people want food products also, how do they get? So the best way was order from Big Basket or Zometo. Now, this is an easy understanding of what is e-commerce in a food value chain. And this has been a multi-billion dollar industry just in India alone. But the brands like Big Basket, Swiggy, Zometo are again urban brands. They are not focusing currently on the rural parts of India. So the current development of what we see in India has got a potential of at least $20 trillion. Yes, at least $20 trillion if we actually focus on the villages to get into e-commerce. Or if we see that the whole world is online today and the products are actually sourced from the smaller uh, SMEs and those SMEs are not sitting in the urban cities like Mumbai or Delhi or Bangalore. They all are mainly in the smaller towns and cities or very small clusters where people are not directly going. So with the e-commerce infrastructure, it becomes very easy for the village SME to directly upload their products for the global audience. We have seen success of the village e-commerce when I was working with Alibaba Group China. With Alibaba Group, there is a brand called Taobao. Taobao is basically a website. 
an application which connects the rural or i would say villages of a particular <clears throat> commodity and they get those stores into taobao's platform an interesting thing is the taobao villages are basically cluster of 50 plus taobao stores from one village so if a village has got at least 50 stores in taobao that is called as taobao store village or taobao village in simple words and from here the products are packed and there are other towns other cities even similar kind of villages where there will be a need so taobao takes care of fulfillment that is logistics packaging branding marketing and more importantly the entire ecosystem of in case if there's a refund has to be initiated or payment has to be sent to the farmer or to the a person who is the manufacturer the entire infrastructure is taken care by taobao as a platform so when i saw taobao success happening in china so why not we can do the similar kind of thing in india so the point is if we have to make villages or i would say india as atmanirbhar as professor moni rightly said that vinoba bhave at some point told that india is a krishi pradhan desh which means that india has got a very high potential in agricultural industry which is predominantly a rural economy and the biggest market today is the villages and at the same time the consumers as well as the producers are sitting in villages and we're just touching the 5% or 10% of the population and trying to make some billions of dollars in economical growth but here is a 20 trillion dollar market which is untapped there are thousands of commodities and there are some major commodities for example in agriculture there is something called spices professor moni was showing me a couple of days back that spices itself is a multi billion dollar economy in itself and government has identified that in each district the particular type of spices which has been generating the maximum amount of economical value to that district so with this in india itself if you see district wise there are many spices which are grown and the district's economy purely depends on that particular commodity like spices as one commodity there are many other commodities also in Uh, in the same district so the idea is currently that how do we empower the villages the msmes so that they can trade not just limited to india but they can also export directly to the end user now the big challenge is majority of the people who are into production or manufacturing in the rural india they are not tech savvy that is one big challenge we have understood and if we tell them that hey you can sell globally they are probably scared at some point of time that uh, how can they export how the money will be secure for them and they do not understand about cross border trade there are many ftas that is free trade agreements between countries but due to one big reason that is the financial literacy or i would say the business literacy which is the biggest missing element and if we can solve that i think the village people will have the confidence to do trade gujarat is an example where the rural development of manufacturing is done in a way that the gujarat economy has grown and flourished over the last 15 years if you see that the consumers also have a challenge when they have to deal with the rural village based manufacturers and the reason is there as we know that the current state in which india is and the way people work in the villages people think that um, in villages the life has to be simple 
a simple life so when it is simple life they try to make things also simple so when i say simple life simple things but in the uh, glittered internet world or i would say the urban population where the shine is sold so this is the gap where the rural manufacturers do not exactly understand how to brand a product how to present it and how to make it appealing for the urban population so that they can make the purchase decisions and then not only this money is also a big problem the financials are always have been an issue in the rural part if people get money the first thing i see that people do not want to stay in villages anymore the moment they get some good money majority of people want to relocate from their villages and i have seen people uh, leaving the whole village it's a very uh, recent uh, trip i had in uttarakhand and there is a village where only 10 people are staying in the last 3 years about 10000 people have migrated from that village to get works or opportunities in bigger cities so the challenges are not just from the village msme in terms of trade it's about how do we make those people to stay in that place government has got many plans but it is not been reachable to the end users please allow me a moment i'll just open a slide so we can see that yes here we go so if you see this particular slide this is not of india it's of alibaba china and alibaba has done a research that not just in china but also in india the platform can be created which can enable hundreds and thousands of store owners to directly upload their products and they can make sure that the look the presentation and the logistics as well as the financials can be taken care because this was the big problem in the rural or village economical development when it was uh, pilot in china so what i can show you if the screen can be shown or maybe i can just uh, exactly share my screen and you can see this here allow me a moment please yeah great here we go i'm sharing my screen hope my screen is visible um professor moni can you please confirm me if my screen is visible uh professor moni your uh, microphone is mute Uh, it is the previous slide that experience digital technology enables village MSME. That hmm. only is visible. Okay, no problems, no problems. I'll I'll go ahead with this only. Hmm. So um yeah. Here I go. Okay, no worries. There's some permission questions. It's asking me from the security side of my system. Hmm. I'll continue okay. with this. It's okay. so uh, what i mean is like how alibaba has done research on building an infrastructure which is purely for alibaba's uh, growth for china's villages the exact same thing can be templated for india also we just have to identify the clusters of villages and what products they are producing currently and how much economical uh, uh, growth they are currently contributing and what are the reasons that those um, wastes are going on they are not able to increase the yield and what are the challenges that they are not able to sell those things what i see uh, in my last year so experience majority of villages or the uh, business owners in the villages they lack mainly in marketing and sales if we can help them with marketing and sales then they are very confident to continue their business 
and this is where we we have to focus on to grow the economics of a village if you see the cross border e-commerce e and foreign trade uh, there's a huge growth happening in the last couple of years but again this is the urban growth the rural growth is slightly lesser so how can we help the village msmes to access the global market via e-commerce so there are many e-commerce platforms today uh, one we all are aware of that is amazon itself amazon has come up with amazon global amazon global is a platform which helps the indian manufacturers to directly list their products in amazon global websites which are for example the amazon us amazon france amazon uae and many other network portals of amazon where the consumers of that country can directly place order the products can be sold through the amazons fulfilled by amazon that we call as fba model so amazon makes this sure that the products will be kept in the amazon's fulfillment center that is basically a huge warehouse in a city or in a particular area where most of the people are ordering that particular kind of product and the villages can directly or the msme from the villages can be directly been onboarded to such platforms not just limited to amazon only but there are many other platforms like amazon uh, there are success stories in the last 4 years 5 years there is a company called misho m w -E, e s h o misho misho is now a unicorn and the interesting part of misho is misho has not targeted how amazon has targeted india or flipkart had targeted india when flipkart came flipkart targeted the urban india not the rural india but when amazon came amazon came with cash on delivery option and they targeted the tier 2 towns and the tier 3 towns so the amazon success became bigger than flipkart because they were able to penetrate the semi urban or semi rural part of india now if you see the village growth or the actual facilitations that uh, other companies are doing today a uh, misho there's another company called uh, shop 101 and there's one great company called glow road which is partner of amazon now amazon has acquired that company and a company called wubli w o v l y and except this there's an interesting brand called bulbul bulbul is basically a network of live streaming of shopping apps and the mission of bulbul is to make an easy online shopping experience which is real and fun and engaging and social so with this they have created an expert uh, system where the uh, influencer can directly talk about the product and the products can be sold over social media channels it can be even sold as live streaming using youtube or even instagram and then there are many uh, village Uh, economical growth portals like ah, city can you repeat can you repeat the the platform it's called bulbul.tv b u l b u l.tv tv yes tv okay. television ha yeah. uh, it's for the live streaming so these are some of the biggest uh, game changers in the current uh, e-commerce space and the value system that bulbul is bringing today is basically it's like a category creator there was no category of live streaming for e-commerce in india it was there in china taobao had that concept and they have no competition because they are completely unique and honestly speaking i have myself used bulbul and i have found that this organization is like uh, like a sports team and they only work on a mission that they have to win and when i say win a win is they are not just trying to make money from this but they are also trying to take care of the person who is going to use their application tool and try to come up with more innovative strategies so the products can be promoted more effectively online 
so there are many companies who are making things simpler for the villages and the economical growth of the villages are not just uh, the responsibility of the government it is also from these companies so what i can understand uh, what i understand and what i can tell you from the next slide here there is this case study of power loom production there is a place called ichal karanji that is in maharashtra that is next to kolhapur i was there a few days back and uh, what i have seen there are over 50000 power loom manufacturers in the place that is ichal karanji and there is an association of power loom producers and there is a um, proper structure in place where they make sure that the products are not just produced locally for ichal karanji but also for the nearby places where they will do some more value add on the interesting fact is the yarns come from a different place and the main fabric is created here in ichal karanji and then there is one more place next in in maharashtra only another very small town but now it has grown bigger it's called bhivandi which is also a power loom production hub so people do trade cross trade or i would say cross district trade or gramin trade or i i have to figure out what exactly should be the name because these are like rural to rural trade is happening one person is making yarn the other person is making the fabric and the third person is now making the complete uh, clothing out of it and this is happening in three different clusters in the same place that is maharashtra so if things can happen like this for a particular industry then the missing element is marketing if we can empower these power loom producers to make an e-commerce portal for example there is a portal called uh, there is a singapore based company run by ankiti bos and uh, the e-commerce portal is called zilingo z i l i n g o zilingo zilingo predominantly focuses on only fabrics only fabrics so these fabrics are created and uh, are directly been exported from india to countries like cambodia vietnam philippines thailand because those are the places where the finished product products such as t-shirts companies like zara all the big brands are sitting in southeast asian countries so there is an average requirement of 100000 meters every single week of a particular type of fabric so the zilingo trade.com the website which she has started few years back and now she is having the company valued at it is a billion dollar she had been able to do trade of at least 10000 to 15000 dollars itself when i spoke to some of these power loom producers how does this work they told me that if you do a trade of let's say 100000 meters and the cost per meter is assuming 200 rupees the billing is itself of how much 2 crore rupees but in the international market you can sell it at about Four dollars or five dollars, so you make some extra profits in this. And this is the lacking thing in India. The power loom producers in India, even the village producers in India, they do not know the potential of exports. So there are very small companies who are creating these products, and they are selling locally to another local clusters. And there is one big company. who connects all the dots and they make the profits and this is how the trade has been facilitated in the existing strategy of india's economical growth but what i see we have to make changes here is we need to create a model like ondc or we need to create a system where the stores can be directly live and the products can directly be been promoted internationally the logistics the supply chain for that vendors are available to so logistics there is a company called delivery that can be the driving force of logistics that also takes care of custom clearance 
for international markets. And there are so many companies and service providers today who can help these power loom producers of Ichil Karanji, as an example I'm telling you, or spice manufacturers or producers from different, different districts to make sure that their products are safe and the payments are received. There are banks which also help in the trade. We need a platform. We are actually working for a platform in which the products can be uploaded and the sales can happen smoothly. Now, when, when I see you, when I show you this, what exactly does the village level e-commerce portal should focus on? So the village level e-commerce should focus on the processed foods which are ready for consumption. There is an example. There is a place in the rural part of Karnataka where uh, they make coffee. The coffee beans are produced locally and then they are cleaned and they're harvested and finally packed. And big brands like Davidoff, they purchase the coffee from there. You might have heard about a brand called Cafe Coffee Day, CCD. CCD has been basically a huge conglomerate today, but even they have been sourcing coffee from the entire Karnataka. So I won't say they are e-commerce, but today they're using the e-commerce functionality so that they can directly sell the products. But that one company is using e-commerce under their own brand name. So the majority of profit goes to that brand because they are using the e-commerce functionality. But if we have to create India's Atmanirbhar Bharat, then we have to I'm sorry to say this, but we have to remove the sectors of these big giant brands who are controlling those small farmers and the small farmers are still in that uh, worrisome stage that how can I sell my products online? So we have created a program especially to teach the farmers as well as small and medium enterprises on how they can use e-commerce, how they can create e-commerce portals, how they can sell products online, and more importantly, how they can make a sustainable business without making any financial losses. So when they learn all these things, they know how to sell on marketplaces such as Amazon, how to sell on social media channels like, like, uh, like Instagram, YouTube, or even through Facebook marketplace or how to create connections in international market using LinkedIn. So the e-commerce companies today should focus on processed products, which are ready for consumption. The products from the large companies, for example, Tata group is doing very good. They have a well established distribution system. They have a huge channel of trade and they make sure that, uh, whatever the products they are manufacturing or sourcing, they're able to get to the complete India, wherever their existing supply chain was there. So the SMEs, especially in the sectors such as the gifts and crafts, textile, leather product have got a very high ranking in the online trade. If you see majority of the e-commerce companies today who have got funded, they are either from the handicraft or gift industry, or they are from the clothing industry, or they are from the accessories market. That means if these three things are actually been from the rural India, so what is making the rural um, SMEs to not utilize the power of e-commerce? They can directly create their own stores online. There are many platforms available. Indian Institute of E-Commerce is helping entrepreneurs to create their e-commerce stores using the CEP program also. So they can join our program. We have made sure that these entrepreneurs can learn how to upload products and how to start selling, how to even export through websites like Etsy.com, which is already generating billions of dollars, Crafts Villa, and many, many platforms are there across the world where people respect the handmade products. People are paying in dollars. 
and these people today i'm telling you they're getting not what they're worth for the products are amazingly good quality but they are selling that product at 100 200 rupees recently at a visit in kolhapur i found that the uh, uh, sandals the the leather made sandals of kolhapur is at a price of 350 rupees 2000 rupees while the same products are sold internationally at a price of 200 and 300 dollars that means there are companies or there are individuals who are understanding that they are making it in cash so my thought process right now is let's create a high value ecosystem for villages where we need a point in the village if you are from a village or if you think that you can contribute your time and energy on building a village an e-commerce village or the rural development of the village can be done i would suggest you to join us and we would give you the opportunity to upload the entire list of uh, products which are produced from your village into the e-commerce portal there will be a small nominal charge which we can charge the producers because their products will be uploaded into the portal so that they will get regular uh, listing of their products they will get the marketing advertisement and they will also get sales orders while for you you will also get a royalty coming in from the sale of the products we can work on such platforms because in india right now if we don't do i don't think anybody doing also e-commerce is a way which is generating new demands even right now if you see not just india but if you look at the international markets okay like personal care and beauty heard about korean beauty products they have got amazing demand today cambodia myanmar they are growing like anything bangladesh is doing well so when they are doing we see that they are again doing in the rural clusters because these countries are not completely developed they are also under the developing stage so when these countries are using e-commerce they are not using in the urban area they are using for exports and the exports of products are not happening from the rural sorry from the urban area but from the rural area so each country has a unique thing to uh, offer when it is e-commerce and even a particular region produces some gi tagged product like geographically indicated product our india has got a lot of products which are native of that particular location area city town district so we have an opportunity that we can confidently now upload those products in the global value chain and make sure that the exports of the products can be done using e-commerce if you see how we integrate the cross border trade services for msme so first of all let us get this point clear when we say cross border trade let us first not think about cross border trade as two different countries doing trade let us just understand if a district and another district years back there were about 400 to 500 districts each of them were independent kingdoms and if these kingdoms had to trade with each other that means at that point they were trading with each other's kingdom in my kingdom i have spices in your kingdom you have clothings i'll give spices to you you give me clothings and that way there was a friendly harmony that relationship between those states ha huh. but these kingdoms eventually used to fight also for the power gain rewards a lot of things used to happen but but from the trade side if you see the whole economical development of that time in india when we used to call india as a sone ki chidiya uh, at the time when uh, the moguls came to india and they uh, they explored the whole avenue that okay this this is not a unified country even that's unified but we can get everything under a single brand that is the mughal empire so when moguls came they understood that india has got a lot of these kingdoms and these kingdoms have very specific products to produce eventually a lot of these products have now not been there for example there was something called malmal which was produced in dhaka which in a match box you can put it is a big saying that uh, uh, the britishers came and they have killed all those uh, people who were the uh, uh, producers of such kind of uh, uh, art i would say but then a lot of things have survived so we need to work on identifying products which can bring economical value handcrafted products agricultural products 
can have a great great opportunity for india if they have to export and the rural market or the rural india is the biggest biggest producer of that there are government institutions already established to help the cause but the awareness is not there so we need two solutions in this one an institute which talks about how such products can be manufactured and how to teach them online so that more people more people across india can learn about it and at the same time how they can learn marketing using social media how they can do advertisement how they can do things by themselves so if they can learn that art they will be able to do a self sustaining business so the integrations of the cross border trade services for msmes right now since india is one of the uh, uh, country and all these districts are part of the same country so we would say that villages are now not having borders so the borders are another countries so government has come up with a complete clear information on foreign exchange transportation financing the trade and also clearing the customs and making sure that the taxes the custom duties as well as the gst all those things are there we have created a program in partnership with alibaba for indian rural manufacturers so that they can help export of indian products even though alibaba is a chinese company and the intent of alibaba has been to export chinese products but in india's case it's about exporting india's products we have created a program which can help the rural entrepreneurs to learn cross border trade using alibaba platform and not just alibaba only they can directly do by themselves also using a platform we have taken few uh, months back which is called dukan d u k double a n dukan cost just about 5000 rupees per month for the highest available plan which includes mentorship also and in this they get like a rental they are paying to dukan from our side but but the platform will be live they can export and they will be able to grow their sales 10x when i say 10x that means 10 times so i would really recommend all of you that uh, you can explore the b2b e-commerce portal that we have created and uh, it can be a free trial for the initial days to all the farmers so they can learn how to trade how to export now i have something very important to show you there's a shift in the paradigm right now the industry versus the digital one so in the industry 4.0 which we also call as the digital economy previously it was like the industry economy where the products were produced by the businesses and consumers were buying it hmm? there was a standard process there were mass productions there was low cost assembly lines of supply chain and there was a, a strong hierarchy like there will be ceo there will be this there will be that in a company exactly in the same way there will be this farmer there will be this clusters of farmers then there will be this uh, point where there will be wholesaler mandi and then there will be retail chain a whole hierarchy was there but today we want to disrupt that hierarchy itself we want to completely change and transform the whole ecosystem if you see the digital economy it's c to b c to b stands for customers to business customers are looking for specific kind of products they're not looking for products which are ready made which are already created by somebody and which is for sale customers are having their own minds that i want this particular thing for example there's a kind of chili which is produced in nagaland called naga mirchi or that's a very uh, it's it's one of the finest chilies i think because that one chili is so so strong that for seven times you can make the food and still the same uh, temperament of that chili you will find in the seventh time you make from the same chili the food will have that smell the flavor and if you touch that chili only if you touch that chili and by mistake if you touch that uh, a finger to some other part some other part every single place you will feel the smell of chili and if you by mistake touch that uh, uh chili powders uh, uh, in your eye or somewhere you will feel the heat 
So there are products which are amazingly great in India. They are GI tagged, and people want them. If you search in Amazon, you will search chilies. But Amazon has tried to evolve over years, and now they are trying to make the digital economy completely in their control. What they are trying to do? What people search? That keyword. As Professor Moni has written in the uh, uh, in the title itself, keywords. The keyword itself is the game player here in the digital economy. What people search for, people want that. This is the shift in the current generation also, and the customers want things. And businesses have to evolve based on what customers want. The business have to customize, and only businesses which will understand the requirement of the customer will be able to thrive. So, if you see the value, the social collaboration, and the way this entire digital infrastructure is handled. it's completely simple to understand for example there is a farm the farm produces about 50 types of organic fruits and vegetables these products can be uploaded directly into the e-commerce portal and from here the products can be then directly sold online right so this is the whole process but as i said in the industry economy which is b2b and all it's not possible because there uh, we have to follow a supply chain system and here there's no supply chain so one benefit in the digital economy or the e-commerce is you save a lot of cost you save a lot of money uh, which was previously been uh, given as commission between the wholesaler retailer and many intermediaries so the rural manufacturers of products they were not getting the value out of it they were not getting the value they were getting lowest amount and the intermediaries and the huge supply chain they were making money e-commerce has changed the whole game so we want to help the rural areas to leap frog now and get developed so now let's understand how do we develop it so we have to create a consumer centric e-commerce portal which has got basic functionalities such as the marketing distribution the product design the production warehouse logistics and also the raw material supplies if we can get all these things done well i am very much confident that we will be able to not just double the farmers income by 2022 but it will grow many folds if the process is followed because the new infrastructure for digital economy as you can see here right now it has got a complete global value chain and there are big companies who will be also sourcing from india and they can help in sales now we have identified about 100 different industries with indian institute of e-commerce we have created programs around that we have created courses for the awareness so that they can learn how to build an e-commerce store how to grow that e-commerce store how to sell effectively for example there's a brand related to textile or handloom that we call as khadi or hosiery so there are industrial clusters there are village clusters who are interlinked we can directly get them create their own branded e-commerce portals with their own brand their own name their own payment gateway solution and we can teach them how to do digital marketing how to create awareness in the international market about the product they create so with this what happens out of 100 or 200 or 500 unknown brands which are currently being sold through marketplaces these brands can understand the international market behavior and some of them will become billion dollar companies in themselves with indian e-commerce what we want is to create a system for example there's a large company which is shown here you can see a large company has taken a lot of investment funding and built themselves over years if you see a large company you will be scared oh you can't become a large company because it's too big but if you look at technology technology empowers msmes to compete with large companies and not just compete we can do much better than the large companies the msmes the smaller um, uh, what do you say uh, clusters of uh, growth which we which we are planning to do in rural area villages we have to integrate them into a single portal and all these things together can actually 
give better competition in the international stage. So I believe that if we can make a cluster of e-commerce uh, portal, let's say for spices, one particular web, web portal only for spices, another web portal only and only for fruits and one for vegetables and get all the farmers, traders, buyers, distributors into that same portal. This system will enable that commodity to become at least a $50 billion market globally. Each of these commodities are having hundreds of billions of dollars of value. So if we can talk about some 100, 200 uh, important, um, important uh, commodities, this itself can bring about 10 to $15 trillion of amount for India annually. We have huge potential. The problem is we are not united. The business ecosystem has to be created in a way that we can reach out these products to the international market. I have seen people in Africa having a lot of need of Indian products because our, our prices are economical for them instead of sourcing from China, number one. There are Southeast Asian countries who want colorful products and India has got a lot of homegrown products, for example, in clothing. There is something called the Rajasthani Chunadi design. It's a red and black and yellow color patches in that. It's a textile product. But this product has got amazing demand in the restaurants because they want to use those products in the interiors of the restaurants to make a theme restaurant. The thing is, we as Indians have to explore multiple avenues that how we can teach the rural India by showing them ideas so that they can present the thing not just from one angle but from multi dimensions so they can export those products and reach out to the end users and grow economical growth for india and the government can come up with some plans where the products can be given to the e-commerce portals or maybe some solution which we have to plan right now i would suggest everyone in today's webinar to come up with their thoughts and we can plan something together thank you so much professor moni to give me uh, the opportunity to be in today's webinar series. I really request all of you to please contribute your time, energy with us so that we can help India become Atma Nirbhar in the coming years. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Moni. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I'm done with my session and uh, with my limited knowledge and understanding about e-commerce and the rural growth, whatever I have, I have given some inputs and I have been learning a lot from Professor Moni and uh, I request uh, Professor Moni to initiate the discussion if any questions okay. are there. If, I have, if you have, I can answer. Mr. Manish, any questions have come? No. Uh, I know, Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Smit, I am very happy and I am a satisfied person today after listening to you, even though I have been interacting with you and uh, I have seen your vast knowledge and globally as well as also your interest in bringing in the global practices, expertise in the Indian, the way in which you have brought examples. Uh, you know, and uh, you have been also traveling to go to rural areas and how to bring in that synergy. And as a person who was involved in grassroots level e-governance program since 1987, and I, I'm able to see the pains and the challenges and also that how difficult it was previously to walk with barefoots to the rural areas, even though we have in rural India has been, villages has been produced the best, you know, chemical free products produces since time immemorial. And uh, over a period, we brought in a lot of, you know, uh, disturbances in terms of chemical fertilizers and so on and so forth. And today we are now trying to get back to the, our old systems. And today your topic is that we have taken village e-commerce. And also that I, I was quite impressed by because from the my 
early childhood days and school days, you know, we have read a lot about the Acharya Vinoba Bhave. And the way a man who is in, look, who was really, you know, talking about the rural industries to give, you know, employment opportunities, also self-sufficiency. That's why in this program, I always quote what Acharya Vinoba Bhave said it. And then you see that, you know, and then, you know, when in 87, when I was given the responsibility for district information system, means introducing, you know, computerization, digitalization in the district level under the, you know, NIC expansion programs, NICRET, networking of district headquarters, and then the district information system as a soul, as a water going through the, you know, tube. And I identified, I was given only the six letter word, D-I-S-N-I-C. As a former IITian and a man, was a, a person was born and brought up in rural India. And I thought that it is the greatest opportunity was given to me by the government of India, National Informatics Center, then Planning Commission, to work in this one. So I looked into it that how to help, how to facilitate a visionary approach how the computerization should help, you know, 20 years later. So I put 28 sectoral database development programs, even though technology was not available. It's only a D-based technology. And we said, which can transmit data only 1,000 characters per second. And then, you know, you have, uh, you know, that is, uh, you know, a terminal a system which can support five terminals with the Xenix operating system. We were able to bring in, you know, a complete revolution of, you know, thinking process. That's why that, you know, this is, I was able to break the barriers of conservatism with this thinking process in 1987. I studied, I had a Padayatra in Kerala state. I was received with, you know, black flag in some of the districts. We don't need computerization. Nowadays, either go back Modi and those days in 87, go back money. We don't need computerization. The difference between Modi and Modi is only one letter, M-O-D-I and M-O-N-I. And uh, the thing is that, the, you know, but and then when I was discussing at the state level, uh, one minister, she said, you know, she came and said that we understand that an officer from government of India is discussing with the officials here to introduce computerization. And uh, we have different policy on this one. And he has, he should be asked to go back. So you, you see 1987 and now 2022, we crossed, we walked, a lot of water has flown down. And 95 brought a blueprint for IT and agriculture. After seeing many districts, you know, these issues, distress, I thought that IT and agriculture is very important. The country should go for rather than computerizing the bureaucrats, you know, activities in the ministry. So that was, and with a big conference in Vigan Bhavan, we brought out blueprint for IT and agriculture through a conference called National Informatic, uh, National Conference on Informatics for Sustainable Agriculture Development. Asked for three to six percent of the agriculture budget to be earmarked for IT and agriculture way back in '87. I'm still alive, and that's how this introduction was done, and uh, you know. And then after operationalizing many projects like networking of agriculture wholesale Mondays, by 2008, we were able to network 3,500 agriculture wholesale Mondays through, you know, that uh, dial-up connectivity. At MarkNet, 400 agriculture commodities, 2,000 varieties data. And it would have been the biggest, you know, big data analytics. If the 28 sectoral database development program would have been operationalized by all the districts and state government without any problems they have got the, you know they, there was a complete shift after that you know operationalization was done everybody was started having their own way of looking at this but now we don't have a comprehensive database at village level we have so many schemes go are being given by central government state government central sector scheme central sponsored scheme but we don't have Based on village resources, how we can 
utilize the natural resources in the village to develop that village, to have a development economy, sustainable development. And we don't have a comprehensive agriculture resources information system. And, and uh, the digital India has to look at it village as a one unit. Not depending upon each department, how they look at it and create statistics and it is not interoperable. Every 1,500 universities and IITs, IIMs and National Institute of Technologies, IIITs and India is an agrarian economy. It is their responsibility to work on Indian ag in agriculture economy to bring in technology. What is needed for agriculture economy to put it at a pedestal form? Rather than creating manpower for American companies, other companies. India is in an ag agrarian economy. And if, if all the educational institution who receives, you know, that uh, taxpayers money as their salary and therefore building and so on and so forth, it is their responsibility to work out for villages. Or at least in the district where they are located. That everything is, is, is developed, well developed developed a district on par with the global that type of motivation that is the thing which, which has gone into me that i have been working as a farmer technocrat and then after the you know these uh, my retirement as director of and i say i thought that the soviet institute of engineering technology is the first university engineering university to have agriculture as a use case established five centers of excellence to train agriculture graduates engineering students postgraduate students on IT in agriculture to take them back to agriculture. And this can give money in their pocket. And people need not come to urban areas. And that's how that, you know, the Center for Agricultural Informatics, e-governance studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solution and Application, Informatics and e-governance. We have 63 million SMAs in the country. 2005, I was invited by Madras Institute of Technology to deliver a talk. I My talk was in digital SMEs at that time. We even suggested that we have 3,500 urban clusters of SMEs, 18,000 rural clusters of SMEs and KVICs. Everything has to be digitalized. 2004, 5. Till now, they say that they have come out with some portal. And they each industry they are all with respect to their own capabilities and they have to be globalized means not only that their product has to come throughout india their product has to go if it is meaningful if it is feasible if that you know it is it's a global you know practices they adopted it should go to every nook and corner of the world and that's where the e-commerce is very important and then that's why when the doubling farmers income uh, you know, by 2022, task force was established under the chairmanship of Dr. Ashok Dalwai. I was closely associated with this committee for two volumes, volume 11 and volume 12B as a group leader. And this is given for total digitalization of Indian agriculture system, seven mission mode program. The report is submitted 2018. Now it is 2012. There is no action plan either by the central government or by the state government they are working for digital agriculture uh, you know you know you know mission commission and so on and so forth and when a national task force a doubling farmers income by 2022 has given seven mission mode programs it is the responsibility of the ministry of electronics and information technology it is the uh, responsibility of the ministry of education it is the responsibility of the ministry of agriculture it is the responsibility of niti ayo to go and operationalize and work for ways and means to operationalize the seven mission mode programs, nothing else. For this India to become in a, a, you know, in a digitalized world. And this is, that's why it motivated me to have a national webinar series on doubling forward in Cup 2022 as a farmer technocrat and as a professor emeritus uh, of the university, I thought that let me interact with the people. Bring in experts like you. Every week at 11 o'clock, I completed a, today is 80, you know, today is 82nd edition. And then on technology, on Saturday, I completed 81 edition. So this has given an opportunity for startups, NGOs, 
to look into the new problems. Today, they, they have technology. They don't know how to work on problems. They don't know. The government systems at the district level, district administration, is not in a position to know what is the district level problems to be solved. They have 2,000 crores per annum. It gets us an, you know, plan fund. And, uh, you know, this has to be utilized through appropriate research and development and extension. And, uh, you know, that, that is how that digital MSME, village e-commerce, is very important. Bharatnet is getting into that. You know, smartphones, internet connection. And, uh, you know, 14.5 crore operational holders, livestock economy, fisheries economy, 63 million SMEs, MSMEs. And they can, their products, their produce, with value added, has to come to the main mainland. A banana, which is my state district, Kanaya Community District, you know, it's got 25 commodities, the agriculture variety, you know, banana varieties. It has to come to every part of India. And this is where our strength is there. And agriculture wastage alone is amounting to $19 billion per annum. And none of the educa educational institutions, higher education institutions, at least to convert this $19 billion worth of agriculture waste to as a wealth. This is where re research and development will be meaningful for the grassroots level. So today I am very happy, Dr. Sumit, that the way in which you brought out, the way in which you talked about, way in which you brought out, you know, that's, you know, examples and, uh, you know, very important experience like Alibaba groups, one, Toba villages, each village having, you know, 50, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, e-commerce store. You know, that type of, step, you know, revolution has to take place. That's why I have been, you know, telling in every big forum that the country needs 2.25 lakh agri tech startup in the country in agriculture yes. sector. Yes, you sir. need to have so many MSME startups to bring in technology for all your MSMEs. They are family based MSMEs. Today, European Union is training the CEOs of MSMEs on AI. Their economy is based on you know MSMEs manufacturing. And that, uh, that's why this university has set up a center for industry 4.0 technology studies and application and also launched an MBA to train only MS CEOs of MSMEs how to bring in technology in their factories, in their, you know, to how to make them as a smart factory. And startups has to also has to go back to villages. All startups are staying only in urban areas, in IITs, IIMs and, you know, national universities. Because traditionally, they can't see beyond their walls. And how they can work on village level problems. And this is where that, you know, this is, uh, these uh, conferences are facilitating today. Village e-commerce, you brought it. Country has got Bharatnet. The country has got all the wherewithals. But only thing is that we are not working for how to digitalize it. And if the digitalized information system is utilized and adoption of technologies to convert for, you know, to make it as, you know, decision support system. And it's all, if, if it is available, it is nothing like that. And the country needs yeah, something like an, its own email service, <coughs> its own video streaming, <coughs> its own technology tools. And in 22 constitutionally recognized languages, and if it is to be globalized, at least UN recognized languages. So if our you know platforms are built with language customized, and it is very important. And today topic is that village e-commerce challenges, barriers, and potentials. Let me for the audience. Let me you know just concentrate let me tell that you talked about challenges faced by village msmes access to global market and it's a problem you gave an example that how the southeast asian countries need fabric 
to get into you know products how indian power looms if they are through the e-commerce if it can be integrated how that you know power looms can get facilitate you know have a global access and incapability to address cross border difficulties how previously each district was even districts fiber gated districts were small princely states they were doing trade they were doing trade they were having you know ba trade barriers and so on and so forth but and then you also talked about lack of trust from the consumers financial difficulties and lack of ability to innovate and upgrade products and services and in insufficient you know infrastructure and you also gave an example you had a two days back we had a discussion that how spices informatics network value chain is more important indian spices are needed and the thing is that you know and then you know that you know you know it's very important many of the state every state is producing one spice or other one variety or other and we got 365 days of sunshine 127 you know agroclimatic zone throughout the year we produce one commodity or other not like other uh, other countries where six months they are closed down but we don't have a meaningful value chain that's why the doubling farmers income by committee report has suggested that digitalized agriculture value chain for 400 agriculture commodities now this university soviet institute of engineering technology has now working with various ngos and startups like you to bring in one digitalized agriculture value chain one district one commodity one agriculture commodity per district that is very important through certification process capacity building competency building and bringing value chain we announced at least 11 commodity value chain network which has emerged they have they have emerged during due to this webinar series that coconut informatics network value chain spices informatics network value chain jaggery informatics network value chain jackfruit net informatics network value chain moringa network value chain and breadfruit informatics network value chain and so on and so forth and then you know you also talked about very importantly that from other countries how alibaba has done wonders in china villages and digital technology enables village smes i called the digital ms ms smes in 2005 and that motivated me to have a center for industry 4.0 technology studies and application in 2018 in the university and then you talked about help village MSMEs access global markets via e-commerce. Today, a mixi which is being produced in Coimbatore and a mixi which is produced in Seoul, the distance for a global consumer should be zero. Am I not correct, Dr. Smith? Correct. The distance has to be zero. This is what Dr. Jabamale Vinan Charachi, in one of the discussion, he talked about that open innovation and value creation network in the digitalized economy, digitalized world for self-sufficient economy. When one Mr. Jay Palan was from Madras, Madurai, in, you know, clusters of SMEs, when he was delivering a talk, he said that the time has come that all our industrial classification has to be based on UN industry classification product wise not industry wise that is not available and distance has to be zero then only the international customers they don't care whether they should buy from seoul or japan or from india if the product is is is, is uh, you know traceable blockchain value traceability and this is very important that which you talked about it that you know this is you know the digital technology enables village village msmes and also talked about that you gave a very example that in a globalized cross-border one manufacturer e-merchant cross-border e-commerce platform e-merchant consumer manufacturer cross-border e-commerce platform e-merchant consumer manufacturer cross-border e-commerce platform and consumer previously it is manufacturer exporter importer wholesaler retailer and consumer it is this much reach is possible and uh, 
then you also give an example of power loom production and i will be very happy that now since you are uh, you know you know organization has signed an moe with the university and you are also going to launch a pg diploma in e commerce let us take a pilot project in one cluster which i have told to the medas institute of technology when i delivered a talk as them to work on one cluster and bring in hybridization of digitalization and till now i do not know whether it has happened or not but with the soviet institute of engineering and technology these two centers of excellence and indian institute of e commerce which is concentrating on e commerce education since we have signed an mou let us work on such pilot project in the state of uttar pradesh to bring in this village e commerce you know identifying challenges barriers and potential and how we can bring in values to the people and then you know you also talked about integrated cross border trade services for msmes e commerce focuses on processed products ready for consumption and you also said it that products from large companies with well established distribution and trade channels e commerce facilitate this one for e commerce you know msmes 63 million msmes and 14.5 crore you know operational holders mean 14.5 crore operational holdings which produce agriculture commodities and livestock and fisheries then you also talked about very effectively paradigm shift industry versus digital economy and your classification was very super p2c in industry economy in, in digital economy is c2b market led extension what the market wants you produce not that what my grandfather was producing it and then you know that you know standardization in industry economy but in digital economy customization mass production in industry economy in digital economy differentiation low cost in industry economy in digital economy values and in industry economy assembly line and digital economy network and so on so forth and it's very important and then how to help rural areas leapfrog and develop and how to innovate and upgrade you know and help msmes you know that also you said it that you know with respect to consu consumer centric driven marketing and distribution design and production warehouse and logistic and raw material supply it is very important and new you know and you also talked about how each msme can have an e-commerce store you brought up the car and and the technology empowers msme i was quite impressed and moved by the your last slide and elephant it can convey many things to many people it is a simple for a political party it is a simple for understanding you know in school days our teacher used to give a you know story how six visually you know uh, disadvantaged people were trying to understand an elephant but today you pity you know commit you know talked about you gave an elephant you know that you know that's how technology empowers msme to compete with the large companies and and that one is very good even though even the small ant can create a problem for elephant and that ant only if of it and it was it was you know it was giving a lot of knowledge and elephant can suppress the ant but the, the elephant can get into the ear of the elephant and elephant cannot survive you know it it will have its own problems and that is is very important thing which you talked about it and it is an, it's it's i am very happy that we have to undertake capacity building competency building of the rural youths and sustainable development has to come from you know it has to be achieved in rural areas and why you know you know only urban you know centered industrial development why not in village centered industrial development why raw material has to travel to urban areas and that's why when dr narayan hegde the former president by delivered a talk he said that 
we have to have a dairy parlor in every gram panchayat from gram panchayat the milk has to come out as a dairy products not as a milk how much employment opportunity how much you know opportunities you know income can be generated no wastage and like that every agriculture commodity has to be you know processed and then branded and then marketed i recently you know two three years back i visited two villages balavandan pro balavandal pro and s krishna pro in virudhanagar district in between virudhanagar and madurai district they produce organic arar dal by the farm women and it is a rainfed area but they don't get markets after seeing this i was quite impressed that i should do i have to create a thur dal value chain for this you know for, you know organic farming ladies farm women they produce arg- organic you know arar dal how we can do that and such type of things are happening in villages and the middleman the traders are not undertaking fair trade and this the profits has to you know in the share there has to be a share in net profit it has to go to them so today you talked about village e-commerce let us work out pilot projects of village e-commerce with the joint venture between the uh, the centers of excellence of soviet institute of engineering and technology and you know indian institute of e-commerce who are specializing on e-commerce education and also a lot of e-commerce store and so on and so forth let us see to that you know that you know our competency building capacity building human resources development is is it's is cutting across the barriers of conservatism you know in this rural parts of india and and i, I felt very happy today dr smith parekh to moderate you are uh, you know to host your talk and uh, hope that the concerned ministries you know will look into it and uh, it is village e-commerce means you operationalize the seven mission board programs uh, for digitalization of indian agriculture as suggested by the doubling farmers income by 2022 committee report that is dr ashok dalwai committee immediately without further delay and i would like to hear from you is there any action plan which you have it please suggest then we will close the webinar that was okay. me amazing sir amazing you have vast vast knowledge and doubt sir uh, the thing is i have a startup plan which can be a trillion dollar economical development system for india we can have this e-commerce portal which can help exports of indian products uh, internationally we can onboard lakhs of these sellers who are into production of uh, gi indicated products and uh, we can then uh, do the marketing how alibaba has done so there is no specific website like alibaba for india so we can be like uh, the first alibaba of india even though trade india india mart they are there but they are also they are only focusing on selling and sourcing just locally from india and india is a market they are not focusing on international market and uh, their market is not rural that's like anybody urban supplier dealer distributor anybody can join india mart so india mart is more of like a for profit organization i want to have a model which is a for profit model so that people will take interest and uh, we can get some government grant or funding so that we can build this startup and we can make it as a sustainable model by having the uh, points or i would say kendra e-commerce kendra across the rural part of india every single village i want to set up one e-commerce kendra people who who are going to take the e-commerce kendra will be paying us a small amount of money let's say 5000 rupees only per per year for that uh, recurring subscription so that the e-commerce kendra is working and at the same time the products which are produced in that city or to, sorry or from that village they all can be uploaded through the e-commerce kendra and that can be uploaded into the b2b e-commerce portal that we are trying to create we can also focus on the international government to purchase products uh, which are all produced from india so there are many avenues which we can look into 
but uh, the first thing i want to have a meeting with somebody who is a decision maker from the government who understands this and who can help us in developing and designing such kind of infrastructure i have adequate resources technocrats who can help in the development of the b2b e-commerce portal but to 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 make it successful we need to recruit people and that requires some funds so if we can meet somebody professor moni we can present it to the government i think the doubling of farmers income we can do it because the doubling of farmers income is purely about the marketing of the products that they are producing in the global market which is definitely possible using e-commerce sir thank you so much thank you very much dr smith and uh, i strongly feel that with your vast experience the type of things which we promote through these uh, five centers of excellence and the webinar national webinar series and the international webinar series in association with african asian rural development organization which is now both of them have completed 82 edition 82 edition and this has given a lot of opportunity to the develop an infrastructure in the university with the support of you know with involvement of people like you to have an a strong agri business incubators startups for one innovate one start you know startup to you know facilitate as a mentor for throughout the country that you know in the, from the university to have it we have got 400 agriculture commodities and msmes and we have to have a related you know agriculture commodity means it has got farm activities and non farm activities and off farm activities off farm non farm are all done by smmes uh, msmes and farm uh, on farm uh, activities are all done by agricultural operation holders so we have to integrate them and we have to create in the, you know umpteen number you know some sort of an infrastructure in the university we started mtech in agricultural informatics btech agricultural informatics mba in agri business management diploma in agricultural informatics now pg diploma in you, you know the e-commerce you know uh, you know programs and the mba in uh, industry 4.0 mtech btech and the diplomas in informatics and e governance so the capacity building or competence building is going on so in and those students and those who are coming from rural areas and health informatics which are all technology enabled and data analytics and artificial intelligence enabled and we wanted to make them as an entrepreneur for which along with the education they should have a appropriate skill development and the entrepreneurship through the you know incubator process so we would like to have a strong you know agri business incubator program in the university to support at least minimum you know that you know the 25 you know we identify you know 25 you know uh, you know uh, startups to to begin with so that the people with the higher education in this particular areas which they are coming and this incubator you know center will be able to you know handshake with them for at least 3 years so that they are in the market in the globalized market so i'll request you to prepare appropriate proposals which can be undertaken under the you know mou which has been signed between Indian Institute of E-Commerce and the Soviet Institute of Engineering Technology last October, which we have done it. And please bring it. Let us create. And you yourself are having an online 136, you know, you know, startups. And village MSME is a very important thing that. And we should be able to have a handshaking with them, support them, walk along with them, and see to that, you know, that, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know they are able to you know uh, you know scale up and stand up after starting up after starting up they should be able to scale up and stand up and that's how that make in india program and uh, you know will be you know enhanced vocal for local or make it global that's why i was quite impressed that when i looked at it one village one product they they got a you know, one, that how this is very important. Three principles, self-reliance, human resources, and then vocal for local to make it global. So these three are very important. This is voiced in 1979. 
and and 1979 by japan and our honorable prime minister he said it in 2020 when he announced atmanirbhar bharat vocal for local to make it global and this to and i am very happy that under the able guidance of the honorable chancellor of the university so soviet institute of engineering and technology and this is the first university to have five centers of excellence in the world to work for rural india to shine smile and roar this is an article which i published in 2004 in e governance magazine magazine rural india to shine rural india to smile and also to roar through economic development and village e-commerce is one component for rural india to shine smile and roar with this i would like to thank you dr smith pari i am also very sorry that due to heavy rain today in the area where university house is located and heavy traffic jam we have to start this international webinar series today half an hour late but even then we started at 11:30 and we are finishing at 1:30 uh, thank you very much with this i thank the participants and uh, and uh, our honorable chancellor honorable vice chancellor faculty members and uh, you know participants and our guest speaker and greetings from sobit university thank you very much and for more research inquiry please contact professor mori maraswamy professor emeritus and chairman center for agricultural informatics and e governance research studies center for agri business and disaster management studies and former director general national informatics center government of india new delhi my email id is mori at sobituniversity.ac.in good day thank you just one minute you be here just one minute and uh, okay uh, uh, thank you very much uh, dr smith and uh, you know it's very important uh, uh, program we had it let us have an agri business incubator program in the university thank you very much you can look at me so that you know you know i i am clicking the photograph thank you thank you thank you good day thank you so much we we'll leave we we'll leave perfect sir thank you so much